So today we're going to do the handover video on the Burstner Lazeo TD728 Limited. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. Coming over to your passenger side, you've got your fill up point, which is just onto here. Just fill up with diesel, which is on there. And opening up the passenger side, you'll notice that you've got your tyre pressures in the door sill and also your bonnet release catch, which is just here. I release that now because I'm going to show you underneath the bonnet, but before I do, you have got Remiscab lines fitted to this specific model. To operate them, all you need to do is simply pinch the clip and pull out. I say to customers, if you lead from the bottom, that'll then allow you to line nicely up with the mechanism, uh, with the magnetic strip rather on the side there, uh, and that'll allow it to connect into place and stick into place. When leading this back, these can get jammed, so just be careful. What you need to do is simply push it back like so. Again, leading from the bottom so it can clip in like that. These can get jammed, as I say, uh, so as it, if it does feel like anything's getting jammed, um, just take a minute just to re-evaluate what you're doing. And that is a rule of thumb with anything in a motorhome. If it feels like it's being forced, you are probably doing something wrong, so just take a minute. Um, before I move on to the bonnet, you have also got Remis cab blinds at the front as well, which work the exact same. Coming round to the bonnet, underneath here, the main things that you need to know is obviously if you're ever jump starting the vehicle. If that's the case, I'll lift this bonnet up now and show you where that can be done. With the bonnet open, your negative can go onto here, and then your positive just goes onto this, underneath this cap here. On the cap, you've got a plus sign on here, just to indicate where you need to plug into. So the positive is onto there, and then the negative just onto there, when you jump starting. They're the main things that you need to know, but just to point out a couple more things, you've got your engine oil, which is here, and then below there, you've got your dipstick. You've then got your brake disc fluid, your engine coolant, your power steering fluid, and then finally, just in there, your washer fluid. That concludes the bonnet. We're now gonna move on to the remainder of the habitation area. Moving around to the vehicle, you'll notice that you've got your um, habitation door here. And then on this side of the vehicle, you've got various compartments. The first one up at the top is your external barbecue point. Then the one below here is your cassette toilet. And then on this side, you have an external 230 volt socket is just there it's worth mentioning that you will need an adapter to plug into for that as that at the moment is set up for a continental plug moving back to the cassette because i'm going to show you how this works uh, i'm going to open this up for you and show you how to use it with the cassette open to remove the cassette all you need to do is simply pull up on the handle and then simply remove like so when you are using this system to wash it out you need to remove it and then simply swing out the neck on the cassette. Remove the cap and then you can simply empty the contents of the cassette into the area um, that the uh, campsite provides. Just quickly as well when you do remove this you'll notice that you've got two buttons on the back. You've got the first one which is here and then another button on the back there. The rear button here it, uh, releases a vacuum so when you are emptying the cassette if you press that button in that'll release the vacuum in the cassette and allow all the contents to flow out in one steady slurry. Your other button here is simply um, a button that makes contact with the blade. And the main thing is, when you are uh, removing the cassette, you need to always make sure that the blade on the toilet is closed. If that blade on the toilet is open, what will happen is you'll try, and em uh, you'll try and remove this and it'll get caught and it'll get jammed. What we've had in the past is people have simply tried and pulled it, um, therefore breaking the cassette. And what that means is the bl blade actually makes contact with this orange button here because um, that's what allows it to open and close the cassette um, and what it does is it just rips off the entire system uh, so just be careful of that and make sure that the blade is always closed uh, when removing the cassette I'll go more into detail about using the toilet on the inside but that's just something to know obviously when you are sending it back in of course make sure that that um, tab is in line um, as it should be so it can go straight back in before I uh, finish up on the cassette, you've also got, if you, uh, to remove this, you can put your blue fluid or your toilet sachets in there just to purify um, the system. Moving on from the uh, cassette toilet, you've next got your garage, which is at the back of the vehicle, which obviously has your carpets in, and also your book packs and inflation kits. 
Well, some at this side of the vehicle, before moving around, you've got your awning, which is here. Your awning, as you can imagine, is like having a massive sail on your vehicle. Um, so you just need to be careful with that. If, as you can imagine, if you have got a bit of wind, uh, you do run the risk of it, you know, <clears throat> catching underneath the awning uh, and therefore ripping the awning off. So just be careful. Don't use it in windy weather. To operate this, you've simply got a little winder on your telescopic pole. You need to connect that in and it's just a T. You then need to turn it halfway and then it'll get caught. You can then simply wind out the awning. You've got two legs which will flip down. You then need to let the legs take the weight of the awning and then you can simply wind it out. You need to walk out the legs, so angle the legs like that and then wind it a little bit just to walk out that awning. And then once it's at the, uh, the full, um, uh, the full uh, length out, uh, you then need to take it a little bit back in just to make sure that you've got a bit more tension in the canvas. You can then wind it all the way back in uh, and connect it and again you uh, just angle the legs just as you would do, just vice versa when sending it back in. Moving over to the back you've got your reversing camera which is up at the top there. There's not much to the back but that is a view of it there. Moving across to the other side you've of course got your garage on this side and you'll notice that coming round you've got your fridge vents which are just here. Again I'll go more into detail about the fridge when we're on the inside of the vehicle but it is worth knowing that this is where the fridge pulls all of its air from. So as you can imagine, if it's a hot summer's day and the sun is beating down on this side of the vehicle, um, if you can, try and turn the vehicle around uh, just to help that fridge out. Because as I say, this is where the fridge pulls all the air from and allows the fridge to cool. As I mentioned, I'll go more into detail about the fridge and how to use it. However, it is worth mentioning the fridge is fantastic at uh, maintaining temperature, but not the best at getting the vehicle down to temperature. So just bear that in mind um, for when, of course, you uh, you know you are using the vehicle because uh, it does. Um, not, it's obviously not like a domestic fridge at home where it requires the same power. Um, it's obviously dealing with not as much power um, to cool down the fridge. So just bear that in mind. Uh, moving across, you've then got your gas bottle locker, which is in there. It'll fit two uh, gas bottles in there. Uh, and what we say is turn them off at the bottle when traveling, um, obviously due to safety. Across from here, you've then got your flue or your chimney, as they call it. And um, this is your trume vents for your heating system. So this does get quite hot. So just be careful of this area. Don't hang anything on there. And next from that, you've then got your convenience locker. Now the brilliant thing with Bursner is they put everything in one spot for you uh, for all your drain downs. You have three main drain downs in a vehicle and that is your fresh water tank which is here, your boiler drain down point uh, and then your waste water drain down point. This particular vehicle does have four, it has an additional one for all the pipe system um, linking your uh, boiler to your um, taps which I'll talk you through in a minute. But they're the main drain down points that you need to know. Now, coming in your convenience locker, firstly, just to talk you through, you've got your water tank which is here, this is 120 litres. How that works is all you need to do to fill this up is unscrew uh, this cap here, then using this black funnel here that can then slot onto there and then you need to put your hose pipe in to fill up the system. Obviously it's this colour so you can tell when you've got water in. You can see I've got a bit of water in at the moment, so you can see what level I'm at. Uh, but of course, when it does start pouring out, you know it's full. Once you're at that level, you need to then screw the uh, cap back on, and then you're good to go. To drain down this system, you'll notice that you've got a black knob on the top there. To drain this, all you need to do is simply turn that knob, just like so, and you'll notice that water will then begin draining out of the vehicle. The nice thing with this vehicle is it has a quick drain down valve. So for example, if you're moving off site and you're moving to another site, you're not too sure where you're gonna get any water. What this knob at the top allows you to do is drain the entire system down to 20 liters. In essence, it's a quick drain down valve just in case. Because if you are traveling with, lit uh, with water, uh, the manufacturer recommend uh, that you travel with only 20 liters due to payload and weight distribution. So just bear that in mind. Um, now, if you are uh, obviously wanting to drain down to that 20 litres, all you need to do is turn that knob and then you'll get to a lug. Once you hit that lug, you need to stop and that'll drain, as I say, the whole thing down to 20 litres. 
if you're wanting to drain the whole 120 litres out of the vehicle, um, because for example you're moving on and you're going back home, your holiday is finished, you need to keep uh, turning past that lug so it'll click and once you've done that it'll then drain all the water out. That's your fresh water drain down. You've then next got your um, hookup cable which links into here uh, for your 230 volts so when you're on site your hookup cable can go into there. You'll then notice that you've got a notch in here which can then the lead can then come out of and you've got a, a, a gap in the seal to allow it to come out. Beneath this area you've then got two drain down points. You've firstly got your frost protection valve which is here and then another drain down which is there. Your frost protection valve is your drain down point for your boiler. It's called a frost protection valve because this vehicle is equipped um, with a fail safe and what it means is it'll drain, it reacts to temperature so when it gets to a certain temperature it's automatically going to dump and drain all the water in the boiler system. If you were doing that manually all you need to do is simply turn the diamond so the black nib comes up on the top and then a blue tab on the side pops out. You'll then notice that some water will then begin to empty out the vehicle. To close this, all you need to do is turn that knob so the black nib goes in and then your blue tab you need to press in like so. You'll notice that the water has stopped draining out the vehicle. You need to do that every time that you come to uh, finish using the vehicle and this is the same with all your waste, uh, all your drain down points. You need to make sure that they're all drained down for when you're not using the vehicle. Now, as I mentioned, this reacts to temperature and will automatically drain down the system, uh, your boiler system, if you do ever forget so. I would still get in the habit of draining it down manually, but it is there as a backup and a fail safe. Now, because it reacts to temperature, what typically happens is there's some solution in here which reacts to that, which then allows it to trigger and then dump the water. Um, but what often happens is if you've not used the vehicle in a while uh, and you come to, uh, obviously, <clears throat> close this system so you'll turn it like I have done there and press the blue button in you'll click that blue button in and it'll keep on pinging out the reason for that is the surrounding is too cold so what you need to do uh, is you need to jump in the vehicle turn your heating on and what that'll do is this pipe will heat this area up it'll take about 20 to 30 minutes and then you'll allow it allow you to then push this blue tab in and close the boiler drain down now don't worry, you can run the uh, the system uh, without obviously water in the system uh, for your heating um, and that's exactly why it's designed, just to heat this area up if you do need to uh, obviously close the system uh, when you are using it in the colder months. Next to this, you've then got another drain down point. This final drain down point is everything from the boiler beyond. So this is for your boiler, the frost protection valve and then the yellow toggle is from the boiler to your taps and that'll again just drain everything down. In the down position it's closed and then when I push it up it's open and again a little bit of water is trickling out there. To close that, as I say, just flick it down like I've done there. There your main drain down points. You've got one more drain down point which is your wastewater drain down and to access that, that is just located underneath here as you can see with this black pipe. You'll then notice you've got this little square rod here and how this works is using this black handle you need to connect that onto the square rod and then simply turn that'll then allow you to drain down the entire wastewater and it'll come out of this pipe here now whilst we're on the topic of drain down points what we say is because it is just water you can leave them all open when you're traveling off site so for example if you finish on site and you're going um, you know you're going home you can leave all your drain down points open because the vibrations of the road are going to get all that water out and at the end of the day it is just water um, so it's not a harmful chemical so you're not going to be damaging anything so don't worry about that that concludes the outside of the vehicle we're now going to move on to the inside moving into the uh, vehicle you'll then notice that through the habitation door you're greeted with your control panel. You've got two control panels here. You've got one for your Truma heating system and one for the basic controls of the vehicle. Firstly, we're going to talk about the Burstner control. At the moment, this is your master switch. If I press that, that'll turn all your lights off. The only thing it doesn't turn off is your porch lights uh, and also your awning light on the outside, which using these buttons you can do so by just like that. Um, coming back to the panel, 
click on your uh, master switch and as I say that'll activate everything in the vehicle. At the top here you've then got your habitation battery level which indicates there and then below you've got your vehicle battery level which just indicates there. For your fresh water and wastewater levels these are on the opposite side your fresh water is up at the top and then your waste water is up at the bottom, uh, down at the bottom rather, um, like so. Now we've not got any waste water in the vehicle at the moment, hence why it's not registering. Finally, on this side, you have your pump button. Now with your pump, you need to obviously only make sure that you click that on uh, when, you're, um, when you've got water in the system. Because uh, if you don't, you'll simply burn out the pump. So what you need to do... When you're on site and you've got water in the system, click your pump and then go to each of your taps, including your shower. You need to turn them to on and turn them to hot. And what that's going to do is it's going to um, dump water and dump air out of the system. It'll splurt and splutter. And then when it's running steadily, you prime your system. The reason I tell you to do it on hot first is that's going to make sure that it pulls water from the fresh water tank and into the boiler first. Prime your boiler and then prime your tap. And then once you've done it on your hot water, you need to flick it over to cold and do the exact same. And as I say, you need to do that for all your taps, including your shower. Once you've done that, a lot of people think that they have to turn the pump off. However, each of these taps are on isolation switches, uh, micro switches rather, which will only activate the pump when you require it. So providing you've got water in the system, you can leave the pump on. That's your control panel, so quite a basic system uh, and really easy to use. Across from here, we're now moving on to your heating system. For your heating system, if I hold this in, you'll notice it allows me to activate the system. With the panel on, you'll notice everything below the line is what you want to select. Using the dial, you can then select between, uh, uh, hover over the options and then press in on the dial to select the option that you want. Firstly, you'll notice that you've got your uh, vehicle heating uh, because it's a thermometer uh, on the inside of the vehicle and this is for the temperature scroll through the options you can take all this all the way up to 30 degrees just pressing back you've then got your water heater you've got the option of eco hot or boost eco is approximately 40 degrees so you're going to obviously have that on uh, when you're having a shower Hot is 70 degrees, so you're going to be using that when you're washing up and washing the pots and pans. And then finally, boost um, is if you're wanting to concentrate on heating the water rather than heating the vehicle itself. Um, you can simply click boost and the Truma um, boiler system will focus on heating the water solely. Going back through the options, you've then got your fuel. You've got the option of gas, mix 1, mix 2, EL1. Or EL2. So to explain the difference, gas is obviously when you're wild camping and that just is purely off gas. You've then got mix one, which is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric. Mix two, which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric. And then EL1, which is just one kilowatt electric in EL2, which is two kilowatt electric. Obviously, as I say, when you're wild camping, you'll be running it off the gas. Um, however, when you're on a site, uh, you're most likely to run it off the EL2, which is 2 kilowatt electric. Um, people typically run it off the mixture of both. If they are, for example, uh, if it's struggling to heat the vehicle uh, and it's quite cooled out, so they'll stick it on mix just to help that electric um, get warm and heat up the vehicle. Because, of course, gas always gets it up to temperature quickest. Coming back to the panel after the fuel, you've then got your fan. Now, I've not got anything activated at the moment, so it just says vent but what this activates is all the fans in the floor and allows it to blow the heating through if i was to select my heating now what that will give me is the option of eco high or boost uh, eco is a gradual fan um, high is more intense and then boost is just like your water heater and what that'll do is it'll concentrate rather than concentrating on the he uh, water heater as i discussed before it'll concentrate on heating the actual vehicle itself Coming through, you've then got a timer. If you wanted, you can set a timer of when you want the heating to start. You've then got your clock. And then you've got your spanner, which is for your settings. Located in the settings is the reset button, which is the main aspect that you're going to need to know. For the reset, it's really simple. All you need to do is simply click the button. Uh, it'll then initialize the panel 
uh, and then it's going to reset the panel. Now the times that you need to reset is that, of course if you have got an error code. Now the times you typically get an error code is because what often happens is you've selected a fuel that you've not got. So say you're trying to heat the vehicle with gas, but you've not got any gas supplied to the vehicle. You'll get a warning error code, which will flash onto here. It'll have a triangle with a warning in. Uh, and from that, you'll need to reset the system. So you need to go into that reset button, click the reset. It'll initialize and reset the panel. You then need to wait 20 minutes before then uh, correcting it and putting it on the right fuel, what you have supplied to the vehicle. So just bear that in mind. To turn the system off, all you need to do is hold this in, and that will then turn the trimmer panel off. Moving on from the control panel into your kitchen area, we've discussed about priming your system. Just quickly, your hob is the exact same as what you'd get at home. This is just strictly off gas, however, so you need to hold in the buttons and obviously feed it through. You have got an igniter switch, which is just there. Coming into the kitchen, You'll notice underneath here you've got some red taps. They're isolation valves. With these you don't need to mess around with them. Only mess around obviously with them and turn them if a te technician or myself advises you to. Um, these are just designed to isolate certain areas when we're doing PDI checks etc. you then got storage throughout the vehicle. And then also a little bit more down here. You'll also notice that down here you've got your RCD breaker, which is your trip box. If the van ever trips, you need to come to this area here um, and obviously make sure um, that it's not tripped and reset it through here. Carrying on, you've also got a bit more storage up at the top here. And whilst I open up here, I'll show you that you've got your aerial. How the aerial works is you've got a little booster box, which is here. And then you've also got the physical aerial here. To operate this, you firstly need to make sure that the aerial is turned on. There's a little switch on here which activates the aerial. Uh, it's worth mentioning that you do need your master switch on for that to activate. Once turned on, you can then untwist and unscrew this, uh, this um, cap here, push up the aerial and then tighten it into place. Then using the arm on the bottom here, you can actually twist uh, that to angle and tilt the head of the aerial, um, depending on how much range you are getting. Now on here, you've got three settings. You've got a red light, an amber light, and a green light. At the moment, the green light is on to indicate that we've got a good signal, but obviously if it's on a red light, you'll need to mess around with the aerial um, and position it in a way that amplifies the signal. You have also for further um, uh, uh, range, i uh, got a dial here uh, which you can turn to maximise uh, that range there. Moving on, you've then got a cupboard up here and then we're on to your fridge which as I say is a three-way fridge and I've briefly mentioned outside. Put frozen things in if you want frozen things to be in the freezer and then put cool things in the fridge if you want uh, cool things uh, obviously being in the fridge because it does a very good job at maintaining the temperature. To operate this system all you need to do is simply click this button and that'll turn everything on. It's known as a three-way fridge because there's three ways to power it. But the first one is a plug. That's for 230 volts. So when you're on site, uh, you're going to obviously have a hookup cable. Um, so you'll activate it there. So click that and that'll allow you to obviously turn um, the fridge on and have it lead off the 230 volt. If you're wild camping, you've then got a gas symbol here, which if you click will then select gas for you. You've then finally got a battery symbol here, which is for your leisure battery, which will allow the fridge to run off the leisure battery. Now, typically a lot of people think that they can run the fridge when they're wild camping off the leisure battery, because uh, obviously they're wild camping and they're off grid, so they therefore can't use it off the 230 volt. However, that isn't the case, because if it was, it would simply trip the vehicle. So if that's the case, if you are wild camping, you need to make sure that you keep it on gas. Um, the only reason that 12 volt symbol is there is when you're traveling this vehicle has got a built-in alternator so what that's going to do is the vehicle battery is going to send um, a feeder charge through the alternator which will therefore power the leisure battery so then power the fridge now you'll notice that you've got an a button here which stands for automatic if you select that that will then automatically select whichever fuel you've got um, and assign it to obviously power the fridge which makes things very simple
On this side, you can alter the temperature of the fridge. And then also this is a reset button if you do ever get an error code, providing like the, uh, the heating system, um, you have uh, selected a wrong fuel or something like that. Into the back, you've also got an infill cushion here, which can slot into there to make a big double bed. You've got your ladders as well for your drop down bed at the front. Um, and then in this particular model, we've gone for the TV at the back. You have got a bit of storage underneath here as well, slide out drawers, and then hanging space underneath here. Uh, and it's worth mentioning in your steps, you've got a bit more storage and these simply slide out like so. Moving across into the uh, bathroom area, which is just opposite the kitchen area, you've got your bathroom. In here, you've got your cassette toilet and also your shower on this side. Now we've discussed about priming your system um, and uh, obviously priming the system for the shower as well. Um, so that's everything done with the shower. Uh, but the main thing down here is your cassette toilet. So what, uh, how to use this is when you're in use, what you need to do is come down to the bottom here and slide this plastic um, sheath here. What this is, this is the blade for the toilet as I mentioned outside and this will open and close the cassette. In this position, the cassette is open. If I push away from me, it closes it. And as I say, that'll allow the entire cassette to open and close. When in use, you need to of course open it and then all the waste can drop into the cassette. Uh, you then need to click that blue button on the top there, which activates your flush. That'll then flush the entire system. And then you need to close the blade, closing the cassette to stop odours from escaping. Of course, you should always do that. But when you do get in the habit of that, that means when you do come to empty the cassette, um, it's already in a closed position, so you can simply remove it. Coming back to your flush, as I say, your flush is just... Uh, activated by that blue button there that uses your fresh water and it's worth mentioning that that will only work when your pump is on you will also get a red light symbol on here uh, when the cassette is full of course when you get that you need to empty the system moving back forward to the vehicle you have got your drop down bed in this specific model to operate this of course you need your electrics on you then need to turn the key and then you can simply drop the bed like so keep your finger on the switch as soon as you let go, it'll then stop the bed like that. You then get your ladders up to it in the way you go. To get this in its lowest position, what you need to do is just remove these backrests on the cushions. Make sure that the uh, lights underneath are folded in. And of course, make sure that this area is clear. And then you can drop it down to its lowest level, which will be around about here. I'll take this back up now. As a rule of thumb with your drop down bed, what we say is uh, any, all your bedding can stay on, just with your pillows, you might want to stick them at the front, just there. Before finishing up, on all your windows, you have a fly screen and also a blackout blind, which is just here, as you can see. And all your windows, you have the option of obviously opening them and putting them up, venting by lifting these latches up. Now, of course, make sure that all your windows, including your aerial and things like this, are all shut and down um, to ensure that wind or, you know, um, passing bushes and things don't whack into them, because uh, obviously you don't want that. Finally, before uh, to wrap it up, uh, underneath this uh, seat, you have got a solar panel regulator and also a leisure battery, which is accessible just underneath there. Um, you don't need to do anything with that. A lot of people think that they need to mess around with a solar panel um, and also leisure battery. However, you don't. Don't worry. Your leisure battery will simply be topped up from your solar panel um, and that solar panel regulator in there will just regulate the charge, which is constantly fed to that leisure battery. That concludes your handover video on the Lazeo 728. I hope you enjoyed.